Leave it to Michael Bay to make a serious and tragic moment into a popcorn action film again. Guy and I just got back from seeing Pain and Gain. Now the story of Pain and Gain is the true story about Danny Lugo who was this bodybuilder who wanted to achieve more in his life and keep seeing like all these scumbags who have all this money to spend and he felt like they didn't deserve it. Why do they deserve it when I don't have it? And what does he decide to do? Why go for his American dream of course and hiring two other guys to kidnap this rich guy and steal all of his money and live it up. But as classic films as Goodfellas and Casino has taught us, life in the fast lane can come to an abrupt stop. And I'm in no way shape or form comparing this movie to classics like Goodfellas and Casino. I mean, after all, this is a Michael Bay film. We shoot for classics. Here, but they do share some common elements like the rise and the fall of a criminal basically now Actually, I'm not a big Michael Bay hater a lot of people hate him But honestly, I have no problem with the guy. I mean he makes some good popcorn action films hell I enjoy all the Transformers movies. Yes, even the second one I found some things to like about it, but I did not like those two robots in there. Yes, they were very annoying I didn't like them at all, but as a director, I have no real problem with Michael Bay He's allowed to do whatever film he really wants. I mean, it's his choice, but as for the quality of his movies He has some good ones ones and he has some really bad ones. I didn't hate this movie but honestly I was very bored by it. I mean this movie follows the Michael Bay standards to a T. Does it have explosions? Yep. Hot naked chicks that serve no real purpose to the plot only to be there because they look hot? You bet. Corny ass jokes that aren't really that funny? Oh yeah. Pointless scenes of slow motion? A traditional Michael Bay film, ladies and gentlemen. And it's really hard to review this movie because I might not have hated it, but there are a lot of things that I can't think of that I really enjoyed about the movie. I mean, the acting is good for the most part. Mark Wahlberg, The Rock, Anthony Mackie, Rebel Wilson, King Jong, I don't know if I pronounced that right, Ed Harris, and Tony Shalhoub, they all play their parts perfectly. My favorites being Rebel Wilson and Ken Jong. they were the funniest parts of the movie. And Ed Harris and The Rock were my favorite characters with depth to them. But other than that, this film radiates with douchebaggery. From your main characters to your side characters, there's just a ton of douche in this film. Now there are some thrilling moments as well, especially nearing the end where I felt like they started to take themselves seriously, and I'm gonna get to that point later on in this review, but nearing the end, things start to be a little more serious, and they're like, oh my god, the situation we're in, it's it's bad, guys, what are we gonna do? And I'm not gonna lie, there are some scenes in this film that kind of made me chuckle, but I never really laughed out loud in the entire movie, but my audience, they went crazy, they laughed out loud to so many scenes. Some scenes that I felt like, yeah, they were set up for huge laughs, Laughs, but other scenes where I felt like they weren't really going for a laugh in this scene, but it came off as comical to the audience. Like, no spoilers, but nearing the end, there is a scene where I felt like the weight of the scene should have been a little more serious, but people were laughing at the scene because it just felt a bit ridiculous. And therein lies my main problem with the film. As you saw earlier in my review, I said this is the true story of Danny Lugo. The reason I said it like that is because I felt like, yeah, there were bits and pieces of the movie that felt like it was the true story, but other parts I was like, did that really happen or is this an exaggeration? Like, I understand you're gonna take some creative license when making a film, but some of the scenes in this film, I feel like were way over the top and I was thinking to myself, it, did this really happen or are you playing this for a joke? Are you doing this because you think it's a cool scene? Like I can buy the fact that they're incompetent criminals. They can't execute their plans thoroughly. I mean, they're not that smart or bright to begin with. But there'll be some moments in the film where it's like borderline reality or exaggeration and I couldn't tell the difference by the end. And that's another problem that I have with this film. Not only in the way that it was marketed, but the way that the film was overall. It felt like an action buddy comedy, honestly. But I felt like the film didn't handle the weight of the situation situation seriously. Now I know what y'all thinking, hey it's a Michael Bay film, you shouldn't expect too much from him. I mean he's the same guy that took Pearl Harbor and made it to an action movie. And for that I understand, but there were some moments in Pearl Harbor where I felt like they had put some weight to it. They did take it seriously. It's just that Michael Bay just can't seem to switch off the, oh I'm in action movie mode to, oh I'm trying to take a movie seriously now. But in this one they didn't really put any weight or drama into the situation. And going back to how I said that this film had some elements similar to Goodfellas 
Studios and Casino, they did this whole like multi-narrator kind of thing for the film, which I felt didn't work. It just felt a bit disjointed. Hell, they even had the, the hot girl that serves no real purpose to the plot have her own narration from time to time, and her story easily could have been taken out of the movie. Lastly, the characters, like I mentioned, they're just a bunch of douchebags, and I really didn't care about 95% of the characters in this film. I mean, yeah, it sucks that Tony Shalhoub's character got tortured, got his money taken away from him, and his family left him, but he was a pompous asshole to begin with, and I felt no sympathy for him. I wanted to feel sympathy for him. I mean, yeah, he's just trying to live the American dream, and they kind of set up this whole subplot to where his dad escaped from Germany and moved all the way to Colombia, I believe, and, you know, this whole, oh, you should feel bad for him because he's been through struggles and all that stuff, but honestly, I didn't give a shit. The only characters I cared about in this entire film was Ed Harris and Rebel Wilson. That's it. So overall, I like some bits and pieces to Pain and Game, but that doesn't change the fact that I found this movie very boring and forgettable. I walked out of the film just not caring about any of the characters or the situations. It follows the Michael Bay formula to a T. So if you're a big fan of Michael Bay films, you'll love this film right off the bat, no matter what I say. And I felt like this film should have taken a more serious route instead of the comical route that was advertised in the trailer and is prevalent in the film. So overall, I'm gonna give this film a two out of five. Five stars. It's an easily forgettable film, and honestly, I say skip it, but if you're a big Michael Bay fan, you love his style, I say go give it a watch. You might have more fun at this movie than I did. But anyway, what did you guys think of this film? Did you like it a lot? Did you find it to be another bland and forgettable Michael Bay action film? And let me know, what is your favorite Michael Bay film? I actually do have a personal favorite. I love the first Bad Boys. It's very entertaining, very comical, and Will Smith and Mario Lawrence made a dynamic duo. So comment below and let me know. But until then, hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Welcome to the Black Critic Guide. Like this video if you really enjoyed it. Check out my other videos as well. And I'm Tony Wilder II from the Black Critic Guide. Till then, peace YouTube.